In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to remove green screen using Delta Gear in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. We are also going to add background and effects and learn some of the basics of removing green screen in Fusion. This method is used for difficult green screen shots. Have a look at this shot. The green screen definitely looks amazing, but uh, there is a lot of spill on the character's jacket. There's a lot of spilling of the green on the face of this girl. And that's something that might create problems when we're using 3D gear over here. Let's take this into Fusion. Let's go to Fusion. All right, this is Media in One. After this, we want to add in an effect called Delta Gear. Delta Gear is the best gear over here in Fusion. Media in One, Drift Space Bar, type in Delta Gear. And in the Delta Gear, we need to select the color to remove. You have two ways of selecting this color. Either you can click on this dropper and keep holding it while you bring it to the screen to the color that you want to remove, you know, something like this. Or the other one is if this is not working, which sometimes it is a little buggy. So you can just come up over here to the background color and you can select a dropper tool from here and then you can select a color. Now we need to see how good of a, you know, background results are we getting how good of a removal background removal we're getting so we can see some parts around here in the jacket which are see-through so we're going to adjust that we can see some of the like brown kind of a uh, haze over here in this area uh, that can also be removed so the option for that we have over here is the mat controls so in the mat controls we can see we have a lot of different options to play around increasing the frame size reducing the frame size and all of that stuff uh, the first thing that we have to do over here is go into the view mode and change it to matte so that we could see the matte. Now anything that is white is something that is supposed to be in the scene that is not, you know, that is something that we are not removing, that we are keeping and something that is black is something that we are removing. So we can adjust that through these two sliders, the low threshold and the high threshold. So if I increase the low threshold, I can clear all of the blacks you can see it has a little bit of a haze over here so i can just you know increase that a little bit to just get rid of that haze around and then i can go to the other side and then i can increase the whites not too much that they are you know coming outside of the edges just to the point very carefully where you know all of the jacket and all of the you know the figure is white somewhere around here works and then let's see we'll have to play it to see if we have any things coming in yes we have some things around here but we're going to deal with this with a simple mask later on because this is something that was basically actually there in the set and it's not actually a green screen thing so let's go back to the matte results and see all right we have some problems around here so let's fix that all right, that uh, is a pretty nice looking green screen. All right, we had something around here also. We'll have to tighten that out a little more. And that looks perfectly fine. Let's go back to the final results. And let's see how good of a green screen we've got. Now, we need to top this up on top of a background. Uh, that we want to put it put this this is kind of a foreground and we're going to use this as a foreground on top of a background so for that we'll need to merge this on top of a background so let's take this media in over here delta key over here and let's add in a background node right from this corner now we can remove the link and we can connect the background to the media out and an easy way to add in a merge node is take the output of a thing that you want to merge on top of another thing and add it to the output of that. So output added to the output adds in a merge node. Now if you want to take this out as an empty background, as a transparent background, all you need to do is that go into your background node, uh, make sure the color is at black and you just reduce the alpha. You know, remove it all the way. And now if you go to the edit page and you add in any of the background behind it, you can see it's a transparent layer and you can work it, uh, you know, work with it over here in the edit page. However, if I want to do that same thing inside of Fusion, which is going to be much more fun and much more detailed. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add in a background over here. So let's go to media and let's use this background. Okay. And now I can just merge this one on top of the background over here. Take the output, add it to the output of the background so that it is merged in between. 
uh, you know, before the character. Now let's add in a transform node chip spacebar, transform, add this, and let's try to adjust the size of it. Probably around here, it looks good. All right, and let's see what do we want to do with the, uh, you know, the overall edges and stuff since we have the background. Now I'm going to go to the delta here. Let's zoom in. Okay, the edges are still a little weird. Now it can go with this kind of a background, which is not really clear. It's, uh, you know, it has a little bit of illusion in there. But if you're working with something that is a very clean background, then you should be focusing on this. All right, let's go into the Delta here and let's play around with the fringe gamma. So I'm going to reduce the gamma and you can see it's just doing an amazing job. It was something like this and now it just, you know, matches with the background much better. And in the spill method, make sure it always is selected on well done because it just makes it look much better rather than the, you know, the medium one. So once this is done, uh, I don't need to add in any colors over there. Now let's go back and let's add in a blur into the background. So I'm going to select shift space bar and let's type in blur. We can use a lens blur to give more realistic results. If you don't have the studio version, I don't think so. Lens blur is an option over there. So you can choose the simple blur also. I'm going to select lens blur, add this, and I'm going to make sure it's not too much. Let's just zoom in. Okay, let's see. It needs to be really subtle over there. Okay, cool. Looks nice. Probably a little more. Something like this, probably. Okay. Perfect. Now let's say you wanted to add in a certain color or you wanted to correct the colors of this shot while we're working. You can add in a color corrector node over here just to deal with the colors because if we go and take this into the color page, it's going to treat this whole thing as one single clip. So you cannot work on individual background or the color of the character itself. So in that case, you'll have to add in the colors and you'll have to add, you know, kind of match the colors as good as possible over here inside of Fusion. And then the extra stuff like adding in tone or adding in a mood is something that you can add in into the color page, which can be better because it can gel in overall the VFX work that you've done and make it look much better. I'm going to select media in one, shift space bar, and let's type in color corrector CC, add that. And now over here, you can use this color wheel to adjust the master controls of the colors. Master is everything. Shadows is just the dark areas, midtones, and highlights. So I'm going to leave it to master. And let's say you wanted to add in kind of like a, you know, green, cyan, something, a color like this. And then, uh, you know, probably you wanted to, you know, play around with the contrast of the image or something like that. You can just do it over here. Or the gamma, you know, you can just control all of that stuff at this place. You know, I would like to increase the gamma a little bit. Now, once this thing is done, let's say you wanted to now work on the color correction of the image itself to just match it a little better with the shot. So we can add in a color corrector after the delta key. Make sure that is it is added after the delta key because if it is added before, uh, the delta key is going to get wrong readings of the color, and that might not be good. So shift space bar. CC color corrector, add that. And one problem over here that I want to, you know, uh, tell you about is if I increase the contrast or if I increase the gamma or anything that I do with this is affecting everything. It is affecting the girl. It is also affecting the background. And this is something that we don't need. And that's something which we're not doing actually. So this is a common problem that happens in composites and you can get rid of this by selecting the color corrector node and then going into options and selecting pre-divide and post multiply. Once you do that, now your colors are going to be just affecting, uh, you know, the foreground that you're merging on top of it. Now we can go to color corrector and, you know, we can just adjust it accordingly. In this case, I would just like to, you know, give it a little bit of a, you know, that same cyan color in the highlights. So I'm going to be too extreme. Something like this. Yeah, let's see. All right, it just matches a little better with the footage. Now, one last thing that we have to do up for here is that if we go to the last scene, we can see there is an edge around over here that we want to remove. So simply what we can do is that we can add in to this merge node, we can add in a mask. So I'm going to take in a polygon mask 
Let's connect this to the blue input, which is the masking input. And let's draw a shape roughly a little bigger so that we're going to make sure that nothing else comes in that shape. Okay. So around here, now we need to invert the mask because I want to select something outside of this. So I'm going to select invert and now we get rid of that specific part and rest of the image looks as it is. I hope you like the video. Consider subscribing, drop a comment down below and I will see you in the next video.